just well, I tell, I take that back. I came up to Philly for Goodhart a couple times that year because you couldn't pass that up. Well, on that topic, Jim, our next question right here is from Matt L in South Jersey. As it relates to Philadelphia wrestling, I've heard you talk about the hardcore fans, your hatred of ECW Arena, and your friendship with Dennis Carluzzo. During the late 80s, early 90s, a man named Joel Goodhart was a fixture. <laughs> so you could, wait a minute. Yeah, I did not know that question was no, coming. you did not. You just, no, serious? All right. That was okay. next on my list. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, there you go. Uh, Joel Goodhart was a fixture in the Philadelphia wrestling market. For the benefit of your audience, Mr. Goodhart hosted a wrestling radio show on Saturday mornings in Philadelphia, was a ring announcer for local wrestling events and NWA shows at the Philadelphia Civic Center before Gary Michael Capetta became full-time, ran the Squared Circle fan club that hosted various events, and made bus trips to many major wrestling cards, including several with yourself and the Midnight Express, and tried his hand at promoting with Tri-State Wrestling Alliance, the precursor to ECW, which folded in January 1992. Can you please talk about any memories you have about Joel Goodhart and the Philadelphia wrestling fans from that era? Uh, it, well, yes, because uh, we were on a, Stan and I were on a couple of the shows. Um, and I obviously knew Joel from doing all the things that you have just described. And when Stan and I had left WCW, he had gotten a hold of me because he was going to start running. What was the building? Um, the building that, that Goodhart was running his shows at in Philly. It wasn't the actual old Philly Civic Center that the NWA ran, that the the arena, it was a, a convention center type of place. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember the name of it, but yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, is, is, but the point is it could seat like three or 4,000 people, and, and he was, I believe one of his houses was like 40-something grand back in 1991 uh, when tickets were cheaper and people didn't do that on, a, on an independent basis. But he loaded the cards up. It was actually it was cool to be in the locker room at that point with a bunch of people that you either had always wanted to see or hadn't seen. He he would anybody from Buddy Rogers to goddamn Jimmy Snuka to fucking uh you know any other legend would show up or in any from any territory. Eddie Gilbert was there. Cactus Jack was there. Uh, Stan and I were there. The Fantastics. We had. Me and Stan Lane, me as a wrestler and Stan Lane became the Midnight Express to work with Bobby Fulton and Tommy Rogers, the Fantastics, for one of Joel Goodhart's shows. And I thought we were going to do the goddamn, you know, manager match, right? And the first thing, Bobby Fulton is taking me and running me to the back of the arena like a Japanese match. He's like, just work with me, Jimmy, just work with me. And we're slamming each other off the fucking wall and hitting each other over the head with garbage cans. And what the fuck am I doing? But anyway, um, so it was great. He had the chic. He would, you would see legends like Abdullah the Butcher. It was the hardcore Philly fans' dream matches because they got to see people they had never gotten to see live or hadn't gotten to see in quite some time. And also the cutting edge new people or Eddie Gilbert because he's a, you know, a, a cult favorite or, you know, hardcore favorite from Tennessee. Um, and they, they were going to do Buddy Rogers versus Buddy Landell, and it never came to pass. Uh, it, but it, it, so, and, and also, because it was a bigger house than anybody we were working for, I think Stan and I were making seven fifty dollars each, uh, plus trans from Joel 28 years ago, so 27 years ago. So whatever that may be worth today, it, it was because it was a, a big show to do. That's one of the main things, probably the main things that I did in 91 was a couple or three of those shows for, for Goodhart. And one of the main reasons Goodhart lost all of his money. Listen to this show here, Jim. Winter Challenge 2, March 2nd, 91, Philly. Penn Hall drawing 1735 and a gate of $32,629. Yeah. Al Perez pinned Stan Lane. Yeah. J.T. Smith won a ringmaster rumble and various local Philly guys are in that battle royal. Ivan Koloff beat Manny Fernandez in a Russian chain match. Cactus Jack pinned Andy Gilbert in a Falls Count Anywhere match. Tony Stetson beat Johnny Hotbody. J.T. Smith beat D.C. Drake. Jerry Lawler beat USWA champion Terry Funk via disqualification in a fan participation lumberjack match. <laughs> and then, of course, the Sheik Went to a double disqualification with Abdullah the Butcher. I forgot you were on yes. that show. Yes. Well, I actually he told me he was going to have Sheik versus Abdullah, and I said I, I almost got caught in him on the on the stage. I didn't know they were going to come that far back. I didn't think they still had the legs for it, and I was fucking running for my life. You're lucky they didn't cut uh, you. 
But yeah, because the, the one time was I just managed stand against Al Perez and got to be there when Abdullah wrestled the Sheik live. And then another time was uh, me and Stan against the Fantastics in a tag match. So I actually got uh, to work a little bit. Um, I think it's like Bobby Bobby Heenan's tour of Japan. I've seen footage of on YouTube. He just wants to say he worked in Japan. I just want to say I worked a tag match with the Fantastics. <laughs> um and I, was that the night or was it another match that I was there when Eddie and Cactus had the two out of three matches? That was another night. That was another night yet where, where they had um, uh, one match w- or one fall was under Falls Count Anywhere or one match was uh, whatever rules, Falls Count Anywhere. Then the second match was no disqualification and the third match was goddamn bar- or whatever the fuck. And it was two out of three matches and they spread them out from like early in the card to, to the last one and on last. And that was that was a tape trader's delight at that point in time. Jim, let's get at least one more question here on the show this week. This one is using the hashtag coiny drive through on Twitter. It is from Gavin Horn. 